Warning. The following document is classified as a Level 4 info hazard. Unauthorized access will result in termination through a memetic kill agent. Proceed at your own risk. Memetic kill agent activated. Continued life science confirmed. Retrieving file. Item number SCP-3007 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Hospitals and media worldwide are to be monitored for the appearance of SCP-3007-1. Instances of SCP-3007-2 are to be brought into Foundation custody, and exploration of SCP-3007-3 using SCP-3007-2 may be conducted under the supervision of one Clearance Level 3 personnel. All individuals confirmed as SCP-3007-2 are to be terminated immediately. Unaffected civilians who have acquired knowledge of SCP-3007-3 are to be administered Class A amnestics. Personnel demonstrating reluctance or non-cooperation in the enactment of the above procedures are to be amnesticized and transferred immediately, as containment breach of SCP-3007 will likely result in an XK Class End of the World scenario. Description. SCP-3007-1 is a recurring hallucinogenic phenomenon with no apparent pattern regarding age, gender, race, health, or occupation. SCP-3007-1 affects approximately individuals designated SCP-3007-2 at any given time worldwide, with new instances constantly emerging despite the Foundation's effort at elimination. Currently, no method other than death has been proven effective in the prevention or discontinuation of SCP-3007-1. SCP-3007-1 occurs on a seemingly random basis for an average of four times per day in each subject. The duration is typically between 50 to 80 minutes. Affected subjects claim to be transported to a location, designated SCP-3007-3. The description of SCP-3007-3 is largely identical among subjects, but does not resemble any known place on Earth. Although SCP-3007-1 often occur in multiple subjects simultaneously, there are no confirmed cases of subjects meeting within SCP-3007-3. While experiencing SCP-3007-1, subjects are fully capable of physical movement, but report that they can only perceive reality through hearing and touch. As a result, subjects are capable of navigating SCP-3007-3 while also maintaining communication with unaffected individuals. The sensations of sight, smell, and taste within SCP-3007-3 are reportedly indistinguishable from reality. Any trauma or injury obtained within the context of SCP-3007-1 will also manifest on subjects in reality. To date, there have been subjects deceased from high-altitude impact, presumably due to actions taken while experiencing SCP-3007-1. In addition, sound originating from within SCP-3007-3 can be clearly perceived in reality, within a 2-meter radius of SCP-3007-2. These two attributes provide some evidence as to SCP-3007-3's existence. Addendum 1 Interview Log 3007-2C the first recorded account of SCP-3007-3. Interviewed SCP-3007-2C, a 68-year-old retired female from South Korea. Interviewer, Dr. Date, July 12, 2000. Forward. Dialogue has been translated from Korean. Subject was among the first SCP-3007-2 to be discovered and, at the time, the only mentally sound subject. Begin transcript. Good morning, Mrs. How are you feeling? Not well, I'm afraid. I have trouble sleeping. Examinations indicate that you're in good health. So is this caused by your condition? Condition? Oh, you mean divisions? Yes, I keep thinking about that place. Place? Subject nods. Yes, the times before, it was blurry, like a dream. I remember just enough to tell that it was the same place. This time, though, it was different. I could see the landscape in perfect clarity. Please describe this location in detail. It will sound utterly unbelievable, but please believe me. After the vision started, I appeared on a narrow suspension bridge of sorts. It was day, but the sunlight seemed weak, as if it was obscured by smoke. There was a horrible stench in the air, reminds me of garbage and rotting meat. 
Are you alright? Yes, it's just that it brings back so many memories. Sorry, I'll keep going. I can see quite far because of the height, and all around me there was the ruins of a city. Well, I'm not sure. The buildings were different from anything I'd ever seen before. More like giant trees and skyscrapers. They were so tall that I had to crane my neck to see the top, but needle thin. Some stood straight, but most have fallen or have been reduced to rubble. When the dizziness finally stopped, I went to the side of the bridge and looked down. The ground was out of sight, like the city continued forever into the darkness. I had to step away before I threw up or lost my footing. Thousands of bridges like the one that I stood on seemed to be the only links between the buildings. However, many of them were broken as well. All the structures were made from a smooth, metallic material, but rather than being shiny, it was white as bone. Were you able to discern any living creatures among the ruins? No, I didn't see a single animal or person moving around. There were no plants either. You'd think that abandoned buildings would be overrun with them, but the whole place was dead and barren. I see. Were there any other notable features? Subject shifts visibly uncomfortable. There was a tall black pillar in the distance. It was thicker and stood out from all the other buildings, so I grew curious and started walking towards it. I could have gotten there, but things appeared in my path, lying on the ground. There were… Doctor, do I have to continue? I don't want to remember it. Please, can we just stop? I understand that you're upset, but please resume. Subject covers her mouth with one hand, beginning to cry. I'm sorry. It just startled me, that's all. The corpses. They were scattered everywhere. They seemed dried up and mummified, so they must have died long ago. I thought that they belonged to different animals at first, but I dared to look closer. They might have been people, but their bodies were wrong. Twisted. There was a man, I think, whose bones bulged in parts and erupted out of his skin like extra limbs. He had his arms raised, probably clawing at those things when he died. A child was next to him. It must have been a child. Its head was melted like wax, but it was the same height as my grandson. Oh god. Some of them were joined together, pressed into cubes. Oh god, please. No, no, no. Rambling in this nature continued for several more minutes. SCP-3007-2C descends into a state of hysteria and refuses to offer further description. Persuasion is unsuccessful and the subject is deemed unsound for continued interview. Thank you. That will be all for today. End log. Closing statement. The level of destruction observed and its psychological effect on subjects is concerning. Future investigations will be concentrated on obtaining information regarding its location and its correlation to SCP-3007-1. Doctor. Addendum 2. The presence of a large pillar is consistent among the reports from SCP-3007-2. Per subjects, the object is visible to the starting point within SCP-3007-3, and appears prominent among the other structures in the city. Due to its potential significance, Dr. The leading researcher on SCP-3007 strongly advocates its exploration. Subject, SCP-3007-2-GV, formerly known as Subject is a 23-year-old Australian male, formerly an illustrator. Subject is notable for possessing an exceptional memory. Supervising personnel, Doctor. Equipment, none. Additional notes. Exploration attempts have been conducted previously, but were largely unsuccessful due to the non-cooperation of subjects. SCP-3007-2G volunteered, expressing great desire in assisting the understanding and treatment of SCP-3007-1. Begin Log 8.30 July 14, 2000 Doctor, it started. I'm in the city now. Can you see the pillar structure? Yes, it's not far. I think I can get there in under an hour if there are no problems. Please proceed as planned. Alright. Oh god, this is confusing. Irregular footsteps on metal is heard, echoing somewhat. Uh, almost fell off. It's weird not feeling anything in here. Okay, I think I'm good now. Footsteps resume, now noticeably steadier. Subject occasionally slow, likely avoiding obstacles on the ground. Please describe your surroundings and notify us of any deviations from your previous observations. So far, it's all stuff that I've seen before. The buildings are kilometers high. I'm pretty sure they're made out of metal, like the surface I'm walking on right now. The bridges are everywhere, crisscrossing and joining like spider webs. They're mostly intact, so I can go from one to another as long as I'm careful. As for the time, the lighting's pretty good, so I think it's early mor- There was a faint crunching noise, followed by subjects cursing. 
Damn, stepped on his leg. Oh god, the smell. Thought I'd gotten used to it. Footsteps resume, but subject's breathing is heavy. There are more of those things littered around, but judging from the stink, it's a lot worse inside the buildings. I'd prefer to not go in there and just stay out in the open if that's alright. That's fine. Continue. Subject progresses for fifteen minutes without much event. During this time, subject's reports consist with observable damage done to the structures. All accounts are consistent with ones given by previous subjects. I'm getting closer, but there are more weird things around here. There's a fighter jet with six wings that crashed on a bridge beneath me. It's been hanging there for a while. I can see the pilot in the cockpit. Fuck, he's split down the middle, one half hanging out of each side. My god, this place is seriously messed up. Are there other vessels? Yeah, they're all around and increasing. I don't think you've told me about this before, Doctor. No, you are the only subject who have ventured far enough to observe such an occurrence. Okay, guess I should watch out then. Don't know what this place is going to throw at me next. Oh, and the smell's getting a lot stronger. It's making me a bit sick. Interesting. Resume your course, please. If you say so. Subject continues to report instances of damaged vessels, amounting to over forty identical ones within observable range. Twenty minutes later, subject footsteps begin to slow. Alright, I'm looking up to the pillar now. It's much larger than I thought. It's a cylinder, around forty meters thick. Maybe more. Are there any unusual features? Um, I can see that it's got some colorful patches on it. Probably decoration. There are some stairs wrapped around it, leading to the top, and the smells… oh god. What's wrong? The corpses. A whole goddamn crowd of them. They're gathered around the bottom, squished together. I can't even count how many there are. Jesus Christ. Please remain calm and assess the level of obstruction. Can you reach the staircase? Wait, are you… are you saying I should go through them? I'm not gonna do that. No way. Please continue. You have volunteered, haven't you? I didn't know I'd be dealing with this. That is the purpose of this exploration, mister. Currently we lack sufficient information regarding these hallucinations, and we require your cooperation. You can help us find a treatment for your condition, and never have to visit this place again. SCP-3007-2-GV is silent for almost one minute. Fine, I'll try… just… just this once. This is insane. Subject's breathing becomes labored and footsteps increase in frequency. Muffled crunching sounds are heard, along with subjects swearing and occasional stumbling. After three minutes, these noises diminish. There is a series of rapid taps, followed by a heavy thump. Subject begins to gasp loudly. Jesus. Never again. Fuck. There are momentary scraping noises, followed by a few slow steps. Mister? We don't know when the occurrence will end, so please refrain from delaying and ascend. Alright, I was going to. The further away from those things, the better. Doctor, those bodies? They're pressed together like they're climbing over each other to get to this pillar. And… and some of them, the ones that have heads, they're all facing up like they're staring straight at me. Or whatever's on the top of this thing. Fuck, it's freaky. I think I'll get going now. Tapping sound restarts. Subject remains silent for several minutes. Gradually a faint rushing sound emerges, presumably wind from the increased altitude. Doctor, this place makes me uneasy. Considering what you have seen, that is understandable. No, Doctor, you don't understand. It's not just the corpses and buildings. This place isn't normal. What happened here wasn't normal. I first thought that there was some kind of natural disaster like an earthquake or a meteor rain. Thought that was how the city got destroyed. But now that I'm up high, the whole place looks wrong. Why do you assume that? Well, from up here, I've been noticing something unusual about the buildings. They've not just been reduced to rubble or blown up. Some of them have been curled, cut into sections, or even squashed in parts, like clay. It's more like they've been deformed, like they're wires that a kid took and bent into weird shapes. Wind becomes more audible as subject ascends. I think it's the same with the ships and even the bodies. Most of those corpses had human features, like they used to be people. An earthquake wouldn't do that. It doesn't make sense. Whatever happened here, it didn't just destroy. It played with this place. Understood. Please proceed. The wind gradually increases in volume. Footsteps pause. I've come across the first painting now. It's narrow and taller than I am. I can spot a few more around this pillar, right next to the stairs. It's like this whole thing was designed to show them. What does it depict? I think it might be telling some kind of story. There's a group of people in it holding random objects. They're smiling but other than that, their faces are blank. There's also a strange blue creature, but that might just be an exaggerated person. 
The lines in the background look like the buildings in the city. I can't be sure, though. The style is surreal and hard to describe. It's completely different from what I usually do, but I can try drawing them when I get back. Yes, that will certainly be helpful. Okay, I'll see if I can memorize the others, too. Footsteps restart and continue for five minutes. I'm on to the second one. It's even more confusing than the first one, but I can make out some aircrafts. Six wings, like the ones I found a while ago. No report for five minutes. The duration implies the paintings are evenly spaced along the pillar. Jesus, this one's fucked up. It's got some of those corpse creatures in it, but they look like they're still alive. God, I can almost smell them again. It might just be your imagination. You have been disoriented and put under stress for the last fifty minutes, so it is perfectly normal to confuse illusions with reality. I don't know what's real anymore. Five minutes duration. There's that stench again. I've gotten away from the bodies, but it's not fading. Actually, it's getting worse. Please remain calm, mister. You are perfectly safe, I assure you. Five minutes duration. This one, it shows people having lines coming out of their brains, and sort of linked to the pillar. You think one of them might be me? That is an interesting observation. Yeah, I think it might help figure out what this is all about. God, I can't take it anymore. For the next five minutes, Subject mumbles incoherently under his breath while ascending. I've almost reached the end now, and the smell is getting really strong. Doctor, I don't know what's there, and I'm not sure if I want to find out. Mister… Please continue. You have come this far. Doctor, I… Yeah, I suppose you're right. Better see it through. The wind is loud now, almost muffling Subject's footfalls as he steps onto a different surface. Subject suddenly yells incoherently. There is a dull thud followed by shuffling noises. Oh my god, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Crying is audible. What do you see? I don't fucking know. It's dried like all the other ones I've seen, but it's… it's huge. It's got a face ten times bigger than mine, and a body… oh god, so many arms, it's missing chunks, and it's curled… screams. Mr. Please don't panic. It's dead, isn't it? It doesn't pose any danger towards you. No, Doctor. It's not just the corpse. It's the painting that it's lying on. The final one. I don't think it's finished, but I can tell… Oh God. Why is it there? It's a fucking… Redacted. Refer to Addendum 4. Are you sure? Of course I am. Anyone would… Subject stops abruptly, and, after momentary confusion, reports that SCP-3007-1 has ended. Although in an emotionally unstable state, Subject says that he is able to recall the images with great clarity. End Log 941 Closing Statement Providing that SCP-3007-2-GB's account is reliable, I believe that we will be able to obtain information regarding SCP-3007-3 from the images that he recreates. Doctor Addendum 3 September 25th, 2000 Graphic reproduction of paintings on the surface of the pillar by SCP-3007-2-GV. The images were shown to other subjects involved in later expeditions, who confirmed that they are highly accurate in terms of resemblance to the original artworks.
Addendum 4 December 27, 2000 Attachment 3007.B Reproduction of the final painting located at the top of the pillar.